most time. Hello, Half Video Audio Stuff, welcome back. If you need a powerful and portable spotlight that's priced for the people, then the Aperture LS Mini 20D could be the light for you. I'm gonna take a look at all aspects of this light and if there's anything I don't like about it, you know it'll be in this video. So stick around and let's check it out. What I wanted to find out was, what are its best features? What do you get in the box? Is it well built? Who's it for? And is it any good? But first things first, what is it? It's a small and compact and extremely shapeable LED spotlight. And of course, because it's an Aperture product, it's very keenly priced, as usual. But of course, it's not as simple as that. It's an Aperture product, and at the moment, Aperture seem to be on some sort of crazy innovation mission. So, let's blast through the features and I'll show you what I mean. Firstly, size and weight. This thing is small and very light. It's only 23 centimeters long and weighs next to nothing which I love. The LS Mini 20D has been tested as having a CRI of 96 and a TLCI of 97, which means the light is pretty impressively accurate, um, which again, I love. Similar to Aperture's simply fabulous C120 and C300, the latter of which I own and I love, it has a chip on board design. And that's a good thing, because it means it's, it's not like a LED light panel, you have hundreds of lights covered there in their own Fresnels. This is a grouping uh, and it means it's just a single light source and that's a really good thing. As I mentioned, it has a Fresnel front element, which is great because it means you can change the beam angle from 20 degrees to 60 degrees, spotlight to floodlight, which is great. It also has barn doors, which means that you have many, many possibilities for shaping your beam. I got the daylight balance version because it's slightly more powerful. They do a variable color temperature version, which, as I mentioned, a little less powerful, but still powerful. Personally, most of what I do is daylight balance, so if I need to, if I need warmer temperatures, just I can just gel it. The LS Mini 20D has many power options, which I know will be a draw for some of you guys. Mains powered. Sony NPF batteries, 5 volt for things like power banks, or even a V-mount battery through your D-tap. What more could you want? It's also worth mentioning that it is completely silent running. I've had it running for hours on end and I haven't noticed a single noise. I don't know how, it's just pretty great like that. So as you can see, it's a fairly unique product. As far as I can see, there's very little out there that does what the 20D does for its price point. So what do you get in the box? Other than the main unit itself, you get a chunky battery, some chargers, a clamp and a ball head, and all of the necessary cables. But is it well built? Well, it's an inexpensive and lightweight product, and although I don't feel like it's gonna fall apart anytime soon, words that I wouldn't use to describe it are rugged, hardy, robust. You get the point. Look all right, I'm being unfair. I can't very well praise it for being lightweight and then slag it off for not being armor-plated. It just doesn't work like that. So, apologies, Aperture. Its ruggedness is appropriate and in proportion to its weight. So overall, I do like its build quality. An obvious use for a light like this would be to use it for hair lights, which is exactly what I did. In this case, I shaped the beam so it wouldn't point anywhere near the camera lens and create any kind of flare. Something else that I wanted to try on a light that's this shapeable is that dramatic beam of light across the eyes, which I most associate with Morticia Adams from the Adams Family, which seemingly has this effect in every single shot that you ever see of her. I would say that these days it is considered a little bit cheesy, but it definitely works in drawing your attention to their eyes. Another great example can be seen on the second Harry Potter film, where we see this same technique being used on Lucius Malfoy to great effect, and I really love it. Surprise, surprise, Harv brings up another Harry Potter reference. Of course, this effect is very easily achieved using a combination of the barn doors and beam angle control. But who is it for? Well, I would say price-conscious filmmakers who want a really shapeable, flexible light. Yes, there are far cheaper lighting options out there, but I would say really very few with the same flexibility as this little beast. And finally, my opinion. I like it. It's something I'm going to be using quite a lot. I can see myself using it a lot for creating a really nice hair light. It's something that if you try and do it with an LED panel, I find it not, not always as easy. So for me, it's a utility light something that I'm going to be using for lots of different scenarios. It, I, I can't honestly see myself using it as a key light just because 
it, it I would need a lot of diffusion before I'm happy with the kind of light. It's it, it is quite direct, even in floodlight mode. So no, my key light duties for uh, setups like it for interviews and that kind of thing will remain with Aperture's C300 and Light Dome combo, which is just stunning and I love it. And so that's it for now and I really hope you found this helpful, informative and interesting. Uh, so yeah, until next time, let's uh, help each other out and shoot better video. See you next time. Guys. Just hang